for wireless connection. <laughs> We got some people tuning in. All right. Well, good morning and welcome back to the Buttonwood Park Zoo. You're joining us here live in New Bedford, Massachusetts, in a very special part of our zoo. Oh my goodness, hello from the UK. Fantastic. We're so glad to have you joining us. For those of you who've been to the Buttonwood Park Zoo, you might recognize where I'm standing right now, although you probably haven't seen it from this angle. I am standing in a place called Buttonwood Farm. So that's your first hint for today. The animals that we'll be seeing are living in Buttonwood Farm in the Buttonwood Park Zoo. Yeah, it's a windy day here. You're absolutely right. All right. So friends, your second hint is that we have three animals we'll be meeting today and they all have four legs. Do we have any guesses who we'll be meeting here today in Buttonwood Farm? No, not yet? All right. Well, how about another hint? We've got some animals here who you might like to ride for fun. How about that? Did that give it away a little bit? Looks like we're still waiting on some. Oh, I got some good guesses from Lauren. Excellent. Hi, Annabelle. Ooh, another good guess. Alpaca. Not quite, but I like where you're going. Oh, Charles, age six. You've got it. Olivia, you've got it too. Fantastic. Oh, good job, Caitlin. I am going to turn this camera around. We are going to have a nice talk with zookeeper Steph. And away we go. Can we talk just a little bit? Uh, we've got a great question from Trevor, age 10, about the stick you're holding. The stick I'm holding, this lovely stick. So this is called a target pole. So I'm going to give it to the screen. Everybody touch your nose to it. Did you touch your nose to it? If you did, good. And that is called a target. So what it is, it's a training tool where they have to touch their nose or a different part of their body. And it helps us to get them to do different things. So it's one of the things that we teach a lot of the animals here at the zoo and our horses like to get their treats that way. Gianna, age five, wants to know what horses like to eat. So horses eat a variety of different things. These guys are herbivores. Does anybody know what an herbivore is? Nobody knows what an herbivore is. Okay, herbivores are animals that eat plants. So they only eat plants, so they're not eating meat. They're not going to be eating 
steak or hamburger or anything like that. Uh, these guys only eat plants and their main diet in the wild, which consists of grasses. So they'd be eating a lot of grasses, a lot of leaves, stuff like that. So what we give them here is a lot of hay. And then for snacks, these guys do love their fruits and vegetables. So they really like apples, grapes, and bananas. But I don't know if Barkley's got a banana yet. Oh, we'll see. Barkley likes bananas. He's a bit of a weird. Hannah age eight wants to know if we ride these horses and if they like it. So we have ridden these horses in the past. So we do have some staff who have uh, are trained to ride horses, and we've had volunteers and interns who have ride it, uh, who have ridden. Um, Pearl doesn't care. You just sit on top of her and she doesn't move. Um, Juno and Barkley were both pony ride ponies, so they are used to it, but they don't really enjoy it, which is why we don't really do pony rides anymore. They have kind of got re retired out of it. Benjamin, age seven, wants to know how fast can they run? That is a wonderful question. So horses are really quick animals and they can get up to almost 40 miles per hour. So they are really fast. Wow. Our buddy Quinn, age six, wants to know do, how do horses sleep? Standing up. Well, horses can sleep two different ways. They can lie down or they can stand up. A lot of times you'll see them dozing in the mid-afternoon sun, just standing up with their heads down. A lot of times that's how they prefer to sleep, but they can sleep lying down for a couple hours at a time not going to lie down all night like we do because uh, they're big animals if they lie down they could get really sick from lying down too much. Olivia age seven would like to know how do horses hear? Do they hear well? They do hear well so if you look at their big ears, can you show Pearl's ears? So they have pretty big ears <laughs> and their ears are great for hearing and if you'll notice her ears right now are up front and they're pointed and that's because she's paying attention to what the other keeper and volunteer are saying over there. So she wants to know, yo, when are my boxes coming with my lunch? <laughs> Can we go over the ages of our horse friends again? Yes. So Pearl is 22 years old, Juno is 22 years old, and Barkley is 26 years old. So they are older animals. So horses generally live um, between 18 and 25 years. Some of them can reach 30, where ponies can live between usually 25 and 35 years. So if they're smaller, they have a tendency to have less health issues as they get older. Great. Sabrina would like to know, do they shed their coat? They do. So these guys do shed regularly. Oh, right now we're getting into the shedding season. You see how fluffy Juno is right now? That'll be all off and he'll be nice and short haired again by the summertime. And we actually do help with the shedding process. We do groom these guys on a regular basis. Wonderful. Kaiden, age nine, I hope you can see how long their tail is. I don't have a measurement for you, though. As you can see, it's all the way down to the ground on our friend here. Now, Tegan, our good buddy from camp, wants to know if they're related to each other. They are not related. So all of these animals are different breeds. And different breeds is kind of like in dogs, like you can have a Chihuahua or a German Shepherd. They're not related. They're related in the way that they're all the same animal, type of animal, but they're not the same family. So our friends here, even though they're not directly related, they are friends and they've been together most of their lives. Excellent. Reese, age five, would like to know how often they take a bath. Um, we give it in the summertime. We'll give them baths um, and we'll use soap and shampoo and all of that fun stuff. And we'll do it about monthly. Um, but they prefer to do their own bathing through dust bathing. So they'll roll around in the dust and in the mud and they make themselves incredibly messy and that helps to keep the bugs Excellent. Aurelia, age seven, wants to know, do horses prefer cold or warm weather? I think it depends on the breed. Some breeds are specifically made for colder climates. If you look at Barkley, Barkley's really, really fluffy. Barkley's an export pony and they're usually found in England. So that's where that breed originated. Whereas Pearl here, she's also an English breed. She's not quite as fluffy. And Juno being a mutt, he doesn't look like, he's not nearly as fluffy as Barkley is. So it all depends on the breed. Um, they really like fall and spring the best, I think, though, when the weather is perfect. Charles, age six, and Olivia both want to know how well horses can see. They have a fantastic vision. So these guys are a predatory animal. I mean, not predatory, sorry. They are a prey animal. They get predated on by other animals. So they're going to be chased by mountain lions and wolves and other animals that could potentially eat them. So these guys have really cool vision. If you look, their eyes aren't in front of their face like ours are. Not mine. Um, but they, they're kind of on the side, and that allows them to see on the sides of them.
as well as in front of them. Excellent. Now Jacob H4 says he wants to pet them. I know, I want to pet them too. I can tell you they feel kind of like a coarse dog. Or oh. if you have a brother or sister who has a buzz cut, it feels like that. <laughs> now Charlie age 8 is wondering if any animals are their predators. Yes, so these guys, wolves and mountain lions would be predators to horses in this area. Very cool. Now Sam H6 has a great question about what they use their tails for. Is it just to swat flies? So their tails are used to swat flies. Um, they can also be used um, to help with keeping the dust off if it gets too dusty and for balance as they're running. But their tails are really short in general, so it's mostly for flies except for the whip bench. Ah, very good. All right. Xander H9 is wondering where we got the horses from. That is a Elizabeth, age eight, and Ryan, age five, want to know how many teeth horses have. Oh, that is a wonderful question. I should know the answer to. Um, Katie, do you know how many teeth they have? I'm not sure. I know that they have a couple really big molars and premolars, and then they have a couple up front that are big, but they have a weird gap in between their molars and their front teeth um, that allows for them to chew hay a little bit better and hold food in their mouth better. Excellent. We have a wonderful question from Linda, age four, wondering if they have a good sense of smell. I wouldn't say it's the best sense of smell. They can smell, but it's not as good like a dog or a cat's. Very cool. It's better uh, than ours, but everybody's better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiden, age nine, and Nolan, age eight, are wondering how much and what foods they eat in a day. So it depends on the horse. So here at the zoo, we have regulated diets. So that means that our diets are a specific amount for every animal to give them the best nutrition possible. So our friend, Pearl, obviously she's the biggest lady. She gets the most hay. Warrior Parkley, he's the smallest. He doesn't get quite as much. So between the three of these guys, we'll go through about 40 pounds of hay a day, and then we'll go through about 10 pounds of grain. Very cool. Kennedy, age 12, is wondering how do they defend themselves? So horses, they have giant front teeth. So their front teeth are really big. And if when they get frumpy, they will bite each other or they'll bite other things that are going at them. And then they have really strong, powerful legs. So horses can either rear up and kick somebody with their front legs and kind of box them, or they can go behind and kick you that way. Neither is fun. <laughs> Benjamin, age seven, is wondering how high they could jump. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't, they can't jump up and down like we can, but they can jump long-wise. And that depends on the horse. Pearl here, even though she's a big girl, um, she's not terribly motivated, so she's not going to jump very far or very high for you. But we can potentially, potentially horses can jump up to eight feet. Now, I'm afraid I can't remember who asked it, but we had a good question before about how tall she is and how much she weighs. So, how tall she is is a great question. Up to her shoulder, she's about five and a half feet. Up to the top of her head, she's probably about seven or eight feet. How much she weighs? So we do all of our weights in kilograms, so I have to do some quick math in my head. Give me a second. <laughs> she weighs 1,400 pounds. Whoa! Awesome. Where Barkley does not weigh 1,400 pounds. <laughs> Barkley only weighs about 800. Ryan, age five, wants to know if they sneeze. They do sneeze. And it's gross. Oh. <laughs> How about this? Is there any food in their diet they don't like to eat? Asks Claire, age seven. They really, um, in their diet, no. They'll eat all of the food that we offer them for their actual diet. So they love their hay, they love their grain. Um, they don't always like it when we give them certain kinds of produce. They're not really big fans of oranges. They don't all like grapes. Um, i trying to think of other things. They're not big fans of zucchini. Sometimes they'll eat lettuce. They're not salad fans. <laughs> Me either. All right, Allie, age 11, wants to know, where do you put them when it rains or snows outside? So these guys actually don't mind the rain or the snow, and we do have lovely shade structures for them so that they can hang out in them if they're uncomfortable. But if it does get too cold or too rainy or they look like they're uncomfortable or miserable, we'll bring them back inside the barn. So 
they have their own rooms in there. Wonderful. Aurelia, age seven, with another great question. Do they have any sicknesses that affect them, either by breed or in general? That is a very good question. So these guys can get sick, and these guys do have, horses in general do have a lot of the same illnesses that we can get. So Tripoli is a big one. It's actually equine encephalitis. So they can get sick from a lot of mosquito-borne diseases and tick-borne diseases. They can get Lyme. They can get rabies. We do vaccinate for all of these things to make sure that our animals are kept in the best of health. Besides that, they can get old age issues. So they can get arthritis. They can get foot issues because they have very different feet than we have. So their feet um, or hooves are built a little bit differently and they can get infections and stuff in there but we have a professional thyroid who comes in and takes care of that. They can also get tooth issues. Uh, Juno has a cavity. Oh, it happens. But we have a vet who comes in and actually floats their teeth which is what it's called when they get their teeth um, when they visit the dentist. Excellent. Now I'm afraid I'm gonna maybe not say this name correctly but Madiba or Madiba, beautiful name that I can't pronounce, I'm sorry, age seven. Wants to know the difference between a horse and a pony. That is a great question. So a lot of it is in breed standards. So there are a lot of differences between horses and ponies. The biggest one is a definitely height. So when you say a mini horse, they're actually not horses, they're actually ponies. It's also in body type. So their body types are a little bit different as they are ponies. Excellent. Now we had a really cool question from Catherine about what their teeth look like. I'm wondering if I could get a nice little uh, Let's see if we can get close zoom in here. Teeth. <laughs> we're trying, friends. We're trying. <laughs> Sorry, uh, maybe not as helpful as I tried, but. So you'll notice Pearl hit. likes to keep her lips down. So her lips act like a hand for her. So in the wild, these guys would be ripping up a lot of wild grasses, and that's how they do it. They don't have hands to do it with, and they don't have really manipulable tongues like a cow does. We have some great questions again, wondering how old they can live, Kaiden age 10. So horses can live up to about 25 years old, some of them up to 30, but well, that's the very far end. Where uh, ponies can live from 25 to about 35 years old. Wow. Em at age six is wondering what their shoes are used for. So shoes, so our horses don't actually have shoes. If you look at them, they don't have the metal shoe that's on the bottom of their feet. They just have normal feet. And that's because these guys don't go on streets and they're not ridden. So when you put a shoe on a horse, it actually protects their feet from the extra weight of a rider and from walking on cobbles and stones. Excellent. Now, Rebecca, age eight, our dear, dear friend, is wondering if she can see Barkley and Juno close up a little bit. So can we take a little bit of a walk over we'll here? See if they can keep Pearl occupied. So this is Juno. Wonderful. Now we have some questions about if any of these horses have ever had babies. Pearl has had a baby, but that was over 15 years ago. So Pearl did have one foal and she went in on to be a breeding foal at another farm. So. Right. Wyatt, age eight, is wondering what sound they make and how loud they are. Uh, they can be really loud. You can hear them from across the zoo when they're upset. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. I love these impressions. <laughs> Hi, Tegan. I miss you too. That's very sweet. Bella, age 14, is wondering, do they like peppermints? Yes. Our horses do love peppermints. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that actually comes up to another question someone was asking. I'm going to see if I can find it. Someone was wondering if they ever fight. That's Aurelia, age 7 again. Aurelia, you are very observant. These guys do fight. <laughs> so, and a lot of it is over food. Or attention so that's why there are three of us who are working with our friends so that way they don't fight and it's always Pearl and she starts it and she just the other guys know to get out of the way <laughs> when she's in a bad mood they just get out of the way Grace age five is wondering do they see at night these guys usually are not active at night their night vision is not nearly as good as other animals excellent Moki age 10 is worried can they get coronavirus can they get coronavirus that is a great question and there is a lot of research that's being done on it and so far the answer is no but Excellent. there is a lot of information we don't know about it but right now our horses are
are safe and secure. Great. Esme, age eight, is wondering, can they talk to one another? They do talk to one another. So through their whinnying and neighing and pfft-ing. Um, <laughs> and then also through body language. So if you watch their ears, their ears do a lot of things and they can say a lot of different things to their ears. Everything from like, I'm interested to I'm afraid and get away from me. So, <laughs> Excellent. Now we have some questions wondering if you could just reintroduce us very quickly with names and ages and species. Yes, we can. So I'm actually going to throw their boxes in at this point. So hopefully you guys will be able to get a good look at everybody. And we'll introduce them by walking down the line so you can actually see everybody. <laughs> Going for the chewy box, that's Pearl, and she is a Suffolk Punch draft horse, and she is 22 years old. So, this friend here is Juno, and Juno is a mutt. He doesn't have a specific breed that we're aware of, and he is also 22 years old, and he is a pony. He's also really smart. <laughs> Ooh, super windy. And then this friend over here. Barkley. And Barkley is our oldest pony. Barkley here is 26 years old. Wonderful. And what are their typical ages? So the typical ages for ponies, uh, ponies can live from, uh, sorry, brain fart, uh, 25 to 35 years. Horses can live from about 20 to 30 years. Wonderful. John H7, we would love for you to become a zookeeper too. <laughs> You should definitely do it. When you're a little bit older, we take volunteers. <laughs> little older. All right. Reese, age five, wants to know, what do you call a baby horse? And when are they considered adults? Baby horses are called foals. So a foal is a baby horse. And generally, they're adults at about two to three years old. Great. Can you tell Hadley, age five, what their manes feel like? Um, have you ever felt a curly person's hair? It's a little thicker than normal, like, straight hair, um, like a thin rope, maybe yarnish. Excellent. <laughs> All right, do they play with cows or chickens, ask Noah, age two, and Elise, age four. So our friends do not like to play with other species, so Juno does not get along with other, other animals, so we try to keep these guys away from our cows and other friends up here at Bowood Farm. <laughs> Ellis and Jackson are wondering if they see in color. That's a good question. I don't think so. See in color? <laughs> they can see some colors. They can see some colors? Yeah. Not 100% like us, but they are able to see some colors. All right, excellent. Let's see, we were wondering what's in the box. What are in the boxes? Lunch. So lunch. these guys are getting their lunchtime hay in the boxes. So we do feed these guys three times a day. They get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and it varies throughout the day what they're getting. So usually hay is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then sometimes they'll get grain or they'll get produce. Excellent. Hannah, age eight, is very sweet. She's worried that Barkley needs help getting unstuck from his box. <laughs> He's actually holding his box down with his foot. Do you want to go see? Yes. So Barkley's just being smart. He's holding the box open so he can eat out of it without getting his face stuck. Oh, excellent. Carrie Hawthorne coming in with some information here. Horses are not colorblind. They have two color or dichromatic vision. In other words, horses naturally see blue and green colors of the spectrum and the color variations based upon them, but cannot distinguish red. Excellent answer to an excellent question. Thank you, Carrie, for coming in with that one. All right, we have some more questions coming in. Oh, Zoe and Rose, age two, are wondering how old do you have to be to ride one of these horses? So our horses don't get ridden except by volunteers and staff. So unless you're 18 or older, it's not gonna happen, I'm sorry. But there are a lot of farms locally that do do riding lessons and they just start them as young as like four or five years old. So talk to your parents and see if they can get you. <laughs> All right, Melissa is wondering, do they get their teeth brushed or haircuts? So we do trim their hair. So their hair, hair does get groomed when we do a grooming on these guys, we'll trim out any sna snaggles keep it nice and natural looking for them. Um, they do get their teeth not brushed. It's a little different. They actually end up filing their teeth down um, about twice a year. Excellent. Lucas, age eight, would like to know how much hay they eat per day. So it depends on the horse. So Barkley over there gets about... <laughs> Ten pounds of hay a 
today. <laughs> and I think our friend who said he was stuck, he is stuck. Um, but he doesn't want to get out of it, so it's okay. Still focused on eating hay. <laughs> um, Juno gets a little bit more. He gets about 12 pounds of hay. And Pearl will get about uh, 15 to 18 pounds of hay a day. Excellent. Now we have another good question, but first I agree, Rebecca, our lovely cow needs to, to be a little bit quieter. She's trying to steal the thunder from everybody. <laughs> um, maybe another day, Daisy, maybe another day. All right. Sandra's wondering, oh, did that thing with the volume again. Sandra's wondering, how do they get exercise? So these guys can exercise themselves so they can run around and they can play and we give them a variety of different toys for them to play with, not just boxes with their food in it. And then we'll actually take them for walks around the zoo. Excellent. All right, friends. We have any other questions coming in here or how are we feeling? I'm going to do one last walk around to our lovely friends, maybe. All right. Well, we'll get you out of that box at some point. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, Speaking Annabelle, thank you for tuning in. Oh, Bella, age 14, wants to know which one's the sweetest. Oh, that's a matter of personal opinion. I am a fan of Barkley, but not very many people like him because he does have some attitude issues. Um, <laughs> Juno seems to be a favorite for a lot of others, and Pearl is definitely a favorite for even others. So it all depends on who you are. Great. Hannah's asking what their favorite toy is, and do they like peanut butter? They do like peanut bu butter, um, but only in small amounts. They really don't like to eat a whole lot of it at once. They kind of just make faces. Um, out of the box, just FYI. He is out of the out box. Out of the box. Um, so their favorite toys are anything that involves food. So we actually have these fun uh, green rolly cylinder things that they really like to play with. We'll put a couple pieces of food or alfalfa cubes or something in there, and they'll have to roll it around the entire pasture, and they do enjoy that. Excellent. Gianna is asking what colors horses can be. So they can be anywhere from completely white or mottled white to dark, dark black. So they have a lot of different color variations. Excellent. We don't have any fun spotted ones here. You know that one? So let's see. I've got some other good questions. Oh, it looks like Nathan AJ wants to know how long do they sleep? So horses, uh, they'll take cat naps throughout the day and then they'll also sleep at night for a good portion of it. So they'll sleep probably 10 hours a day. Excellent. Grace Age 2 is wondering if they like the snow. They do like the snow. So first snow. They don't like it when it's been snowing all winter long. Excellent. Sorry, I'm trying to not show the piles of poop. I'll have you know that they cleaned this meticulously and the horses were nice enough to make it look like they did not. So don't you worry. Aelin age six is wondering, do they like to eat flowers? It depends on the type of flower. So some flowers are actually toxic for horses. And these guys know which ones that are. Those are. So they'll eat dandelions. Dandelions are definitely a favorite of theirs, but they won't eat buttercups. Buttercups are actually toxic and these guys will not go anywhere. Interesting. Esme, age eight, is wondering if they like people. Yes. So Pearl is very much a people person. Uh, do you know, it depends on the day. And Barkley, he likes people, but he likes to give love nips, which is why we have two fences separating them, because sometimes we get a little too rambunctious and we don't always get along with too many people. Brooks, age nine, has a great question about whether or not they're scared of the cars going by out there. So these guys are very used to cars. They're also used to getting barked at by dogs and yelled at by people. So they are very used to a variety of different things. Um, the noises don't usually bother them. Unless there's a car accident or something like that, that's a little more startling. Yeah, and what would we do then if they got a little scared? If they get a little scared, we'll try to bring them away from whatever bothers them. But they have enough space to get away from the road that they're comfortable to their a comfortable different distance. All right, excellent. Any last fun facts we want to share with our friends? Um, I don't think so. Horses are fantastic animals, and these guys are technically odd-toed ungulates. We're going to throw that word out there for you guys to look up later. So odd-toed ungulates. Um, that's where you have to do your homework for today. And these guys <laughs> are really cool. So they have a lot of different things, but they're fun little, not little, herbivore. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here at Buttonwood Farm as we meet our lovely a toad ungulates that, again, you have to look up apparently even toad. No, what? Odd toad. Odd toad, odd toad ungulates. Odd toad, odd toad. There you go. All right. So see, we're all doing some homework there. 
Thank you again for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. Please join us again tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll have a whole other animal for you to learn about and have some fun with. And remember, if you are enjoying these videos, the Buttonwood Park Zoological Society is the nonprofit branch of the Buttonwood Park Zoo, and it relies on admissions, events, programs, and donations for our funding. So we're having a little trouble now at the Buttonwood Park Zoological Society with the zoo being closed. So if you're enjoying these videos, please take a second and consider donating either by clicking on the link tagged to this video or by texting BPZoo20 to the number 4144. And that'll 41444. That's also in the link. So hopefully I didn't mess it up too much. But we would really appreciate your support to our emergency operating fund. We hope you're enjoying and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye.